So Dave, uh, you said before about artificial demand. Let, let me let me propose an, an argument. I don't know if you guys heard this one. It's kind of interesting. Is this a devil advocate? <laughs> no, it, it was. Yeah, it let was, me let it, me roll these sleeves. It, up. it, it was an, it was an argument that um, was proposed with the guy that I did my debate with. Uh, one of my you know one of my debate videos. He was saying uh, he was talking about NASA, and he was saying that that government is there to create an artificial demand for something that would not necessarily exist. He's like, so, so, you know, it wasn't profitable to go into space. Like, who wanted to go to the moon? Nobody wanted to go to the moon, right? So that's why we need the government to make a program to go to the moon. Now, we went to the moon. Isn't that wonderful? We, we would have never got to the moon. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. So we would have gotten to the moon if there was, if the moon had gold on it. <laughs> but there's jack shit on the moon, except for its gravitational pull on our Earth. That's its only use to us right now, seen right now. Supposing we've actually been there. And, and I'm not and, one of those guys. And, and but, actually, uh, I, I, actually, I was going to say, are we going to are we, are we gonna have to change courses on this conversation? No, 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 no. So, so, <laughs> so refine your question for me so I can thoroughly squash it. Well, well okay, so you said, you know, create an artificial demand like NASA, and then also... He's like, you know, what's the market demand for like tanks and helicopters, you know, Apache helicopters and stealth bombers? There's no market demand for them. They're just there for destruction, right? So we have to, you know, create a military to create an artificial demand to, uh, you know, um, <laughs> create these, you know, these machines of destruction, right? Or else they would never have existed. Isn't it wonderful that... We have Did a government you? that created an artificial demand. <laughs> okay, so let's just take tanks, for instance. All right, I don't want to talk about moon landing because whenever you bring up something like that, the minute cognitive distance, dissonance sets in, the status is going to say, well, think of all the byproducts that uh, occurred because of the moon landing. You know, we have a satellite, Hubble telescope, blah, 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 blah. All that's byproducts, but you can't say that, you know, killing a guy – that was going to kill the savior of the world, you know, create uh, the doctor that was going to cure cancer. You know, that's, oh yeah, well, killing that guy was good. Like that's not a, the consequences don't equal the action regardless of the outcome. All right. So you can't say that all this boondoggled money that was spent. And if you haven't looked up the word boondoggle, it is the most perfect word to use for government. Yeah. That is the <laughs> that is the ultimate explanation of government. Boondoggle. Google it. B O O N D O N G I boondoggle. <laughs> boondoggle. <laughs> boondoggle. Government is a boondoggle. Everything they do is a boondoggle to propagate themselves. But the artificial demand thing, let's just take tanks. All right? Why are tanks built? All right? Why are they built? The simple question is, is to secure a protection racket. That's it. That is the simplest answer. When you cut out all the semantics, whatever else, they are to secure a and defend or to increase the size of a protection, a geographical protection racket. All right? Mm -hmm. That is their only use. There's only one entity in the world that does that. Government. So there's your artificial demand. That's the only demand for tanks, which are completely outdated. Like I, I said to someone the other day that in 20 years, which will probably solve a state, there, there won't be troops. There won't be this. There won't be that. There'll be hackers and there'll be guys running drones because if you can't blow it up with a drone or shut it down, shut down the power to it and all that, you're not going to beat it. So <laughs> – that it's that simple, you know. I you know one, one drone pilot is gonna it's gonna completely destroy the socialist communist foundation that is the army. It's one drone pilot is gonna replace ten thousand soldiers. You get yeah, what I'm saying? Well, theoretically, yeah, but I don't. But no, I, the state's not going to allow that to happen because well, we're going to need, yeah, yeah, okay. need those ten thousand soldiers to protect that one drone pilot in his little capsule that he was running the drone. So yeah. obviously, they're going to need soldiers to protect assets. But you get what well, I'm saying? It's not even a well. I don't even think I was. I wasn't going to go in that direction. I wasn't even going to say to protect the assets. It's it's to you know to 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 play off what you were saying. It's to continue the boondoggle because they need. 
you know, even if even if you could, and even even if they could get these drones to be, you know, the the line that's always given that with a surgical precision, um, even if that was a reality, and they could limit the the uh, what should we call it the collateral damage. Uh, brain fart there for a second. Um, <laughs> even if they could limit the the collateral damage, and they could have is a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> they could have these precision strikes, and the people that still believe the government would clamor for these these situations instead of sending troops in and saying, "Oh, we could reduce it all to this all to this point." Yeah, as you said, Dave, government's not going to let that happen because in order to perpetuate the system. As I said last week, it's a fear-based system. It has to. It, they have to have that fear. And how do you have that fear? You have the military be always, always be on the ready and and keep increasing and almost never de decreasing in strength and size, and always keep creating boogeymen uh, to keep the people afraid and keep the keep the people thinking necessary. Men. Exactly, because if they didn't, if they don't, if that fear isn't there, more people will be become not just anti-war because there are anti-war states. Um, even, even though there are already anti-war activists, even that aren't uh, voluntarists, that aren't you know people on our, our side of the fence, uh, but they're, they're just anti-war itself. They still believe a military is necessary and all and, and all this stuff, and and they're still willing to pay into it, and and so they're not. They're not all the way over yet, um, but there because enough people still believe that it's it's necessary for protection. So you'll you'll never get you'll never get rid of that as long as government wants to perpetuate it, and they're going to want to continue to perpetuate it because that's where the bulk of their money ends up going, whether it's directly through the budget or the the perks that come out to the big companies that that pay for everything, um, and that that filters down to all the all to the, all to the big wigs on the other side. Um, and that's why, you know, that's what I was going to say. It's not, you know, that's why I'm glad you clarified yourself because I, I thought you were going to say that they're, they're, they'll get rid of the troops and they never can. Cause, and, and at some point, well, they've you know, eliminated, or, um, 500,000 troops in the last, uh, two years. Uh, and a lot of those were higher ranking. Um, I believe I, I, I could pull it up and, and post it on the website uh, when, when I get a shot. But uh, before Danilo has to respond to us, I just wanted to say it's B O O N D O G G L E <laughs> and it's boondoggle. And the definition, apply this to government. The definition, it is so perfect. It's a noun, it's work or activity that is. Wasteful or pointless, but gives the appearance of having value. Nice. That is government in a nutshell. In a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, government equal boondoggle. There's no other way. That's the, I'm making that shirt. <laughs> I'm making that shirt. So, I'm making it. So, so the way I look at that argument, what, what he proposed, you know, artificial demand, right? We need the government to make, to make things that are not profitable, right? And then... And I, I said to him, um, that's to me, that's the um, Bastiat seen and the unseen, right? So what what we see that government has quote produced is NASA, is you know public education, is you know whatever they did, um, but we don't see the potential that was destroyed because of all the force that was applied in making those things come about, right, through coercion and violence, right? That's what we see, right? But we don't see the potential. And that's why it's so difficult for people to, to imagine, you know, um, <laughs> a life without government because, you know, you see how our lives are now and people could not possibly imagine any other life if, you know, without being in a parallel universe, right? So, so it's one of the most difficult things to have an imagination, right? And, and maybe coincidentally, that's why, you know, public schools beat out <laughs> creativity and imagination. <laughs> to uh, not be able yeah, to they do. So, so, so yeah, I was, I was, you know, that's one thing. And then, and then the other thing is, if something is not profitable, why should it be made? <laughs> that was my, like, you know, just, the idea of, of profit and, and, you know, the demand of uh, making something that the people actually want to voluntarily buy, that, that is what increases the, the standard of living, right, and the wealth of society, right? You know, when, when, a, when an entrepreneur makes something that is voluntarily bought 
and it increases the standard of living of the people around him, right? And it makes those people wealthier, and it, and it you know provides jobs to people who come and work for him, and that's beautiful. Like, why would you want to force people? Which is basically, you know, I, I guess you could say that's basically anything government, only like Obamacare. You know, Obama's so proud that he's he's got like I don't know so many people that have signed up for Obamacare. <laughs> but if you don't, you get a penalty. But he's proud that people signed up. <laughs> all these people, all these people signed up because they didn't have a choice. But that's besides the point.